Hello all, welcome to Just Teach the Learning. Um, here's our first video, so a couple things I wanted to go over. Um, we're gonna be doing office hours, kind of like flex time. Um, so you can come to any AP stats period time you want. So even if you are my period 1A kid, you can come to any of the others. If you're my period 4A, you can come to any of the others. So come to any of these four times. If you have any questions, um, I originally wanted to live stream lessons during these times, but the resolution on the live stream wasn't good enough. So I'm having to record it, and then you can just come ask questions during your normal class period or any of the other AP stat class periods. So Wednesday, tomorrow is gonna be considered an A day. So Wednesday, you can um, see me between 8 and 8.30, uh, or from 2 to 2.30. Thursday, we're going to consider a B day. Um, so Thursday, you can come 10 to 10.30 uh, or 12.30 to 1. Um, now, the way you're going to access me will be uh, with Google Meet. I'll push out a link. I'll push it out through Canvas for sure. I tried to set up Google Classroom, but I think 26 of your 32 emails bounced back. So... I'm not really gonna be counting on that as, as a way to communicate because I don't know how many of you are gonna get that communication. So I might send it out both places, but I will certainly put it out through Canvas. So watch out for that link. Um, and again, it's flex time, office hours. So if you follow the lesson, read the book, do the homework, it makes perfect sense to you, you have no questions, then by all means, you don't have to come uh, to my office hours. Uh, but if you have questions, that'll be your chance to uh, get your questions answered. Um, and the way I'll be answering questions, again, I can't live stream on the board. The resolution's too poor. So it'll be more like a Khan Academy style where I'll be writing on a tablet and you'll just be able to see my writing uh, and hear my answer. Um, and also, when you're asking questions, we're probably going to be better off if you guys uh, turn your microphones off and type it in the chat box, or if only one of you at a time has your microphone on, because if everyone's microphone's on and I have a lot of students in there, we're gonna just have a, a mess, a cacophony, and we won't be able to hear each other at all. So um, we'll figure that out tomorrow, but um, start probably with your microphones off, would be the safest bet. Okay, so here we are. Uh, this is going to be chapter 13, lesson one. The topic is the chi-square test for goodness of fit. Those of you that have had AP Bio, you've already done this, so it should be a pretty easy lesson. Um, now, the good news on a recording, you guys can pause it, stop it at any point. So I'm gonna go through it a little faster than I would during class, because if you want, you can just pause my recording and write things down if you're writing it down. Um, and if not, you can just play it through and you'll get through it a little bit faster that way. Uh, oh, also, it would be great if you guys could turn in your special problems. Feel free to take a picture of it, put it as an attachment, and then email it to me. Make sure your name is on your paper. I've already had a bunch of students in my Math 3 classes assign, uh, turn in assignments with no name, which once I print it, now i got to try to match up whose it was, which is a pain. So please put your name on it. Okay, here we go. Test is goodness of fit. Go ahead and read this if you haven't. Okay, so notice this test is used for categorical data. So we're looking at multiple proportions with a single test. Okay. N is going to represent the number of categories. That's a change. Up until now, N has been the sample size. But with the chi-square, we're going to have lowercase n be the number of categories that we're testing. Okay, so here's our formula. How to calculate the chi-square statistic. It's written on your formula sheet. 
It's the bottom of the front page. And it says chi-square statistic. By the way, C-H-I, that's pronounced chi. So uh, it's a Greek letter. Your chi-square test statistic is the observed count minus the expected count squared divided by the expected count. Okay. For degrees of freedom, it's going to be n minus 1. Again, reminding you n is the number of categories. Okay, so your null hypothesis will be that the proportions in each category are as hypothesized, and your alternative will be different. Since there's many categories being tested at once, there's no more greater than, less than. It's simply equal to or different. Uh, now, to get your p-value, On your formula sheet, it is labeled as table C, chi-square critical values. And to choose the appropriate row, again, the far left column says DF, that's for degree of freedom. Your degree of freedom, N minus one, with N again being the number of categories that we're looking at. Oh, and it is a right-tailed test, as you can see on your table because the lowest possible value you could get, I'll pause for a minute, think about it, what's the lowest possible value you could get out of this test statistic? Yay, that's right, zero. Uh, because the numerator is squared. So the lowest value you can get when you square something is zero. And that would be if every expected and observed count matched. As soon as there's any difference, you will get a value greater than zero out of this test, and that's why it's always right-tailed. All right, here are the requirements to validate your calculation. And as always, I bet you already know them. I'll pause for a second, see if you can guess what the requirements are going to be. That's right! Yay, good job, Marco. SRS. Um, and of course, we're again dealing with expected and observed counts. So we need, again, our book can be different than, than other books, but for our book, we need all of our expected counts to be at least one, and no more than 20% of our expected counts less than five. Some books just say all expected counts at least five. So just be comfortable with either check. Um, and here's the thing you want to notice, the chi-square distribution is not normal. It is a chi-square distribution. Chi-square distribution is right skewed because it's cut off. Remember, zero is the lowest value that we can get out of a chi-square calculation. So it's going to be right skewed. Um, but you can see as your degree of freedom increases, it becomes less and less right skewed. All right, let's try a practice problem. Okay, so here's the story. Let's say that Josh shared with me that his career ambition is to be a Snow cone vendor, right? That's everyone's career ambition. Way to aim high. Um, and Josh wants to know what flavors of syrup should he buy for his snow cone vending. Should he buy equal amounts of every flavor? Or is there an actual difference in popularity across the flavors? So being a smart stat student, Josh goes out and before buying his snow cone syrups, decides to gather some data. So here's the data that he gathered. Hey, it's Mr. Mendick. Hi, Mr. Mendick. 
We're videotaping our first lesson right here. Guest star, Mr. Mendick. Say hi, everybody. So you're practicing? No, this is real. They're going to get this. I'm pushing this out tomorrow, <laughs> later today. Yeah. So you're now officially a guest star in our first video for AP Stats. Congrats. All right, so I'm going to get back to the video here. Hopefully you delete that part. No, nah, we're leaving it in there. You're a star. Kids will love it. Okay. Get back to work. <laughs> so um, first of all, we're given the observed counts. Now the question is, if all flavors are equally likely, what would we have expected to see? So that's what we have to actually calculate. So take the given counts, label those as observed or O, Tripod. If you have an impressing question, uh, use a tripod. Well, she is my tripod, right? <laughs> I, I hear the big bucks. <laughs> Stop <the shake. laughs> Okay, so here we go. Um, expected counts. Well, our null hypothesis would be all flavors are equally popular, right? So if this is a true statement, we should look at how many people we surveyed one hundred people. Now if every flavor is equally popular and I survey a hundred people and I have five flavors, how many people should I expect to pick each flavor? That's right, good job, it's 20. So there's my expected counts. Um, now it's really important, observed counts are always whole numbers. Expected counts can be fractional, that's perfectly acceptable. It's crucially important that when you're done, the sum of your observed counts is exactly equal to the sum of your expected counts. If they differ, you've made a mistake. Okay, so now our alternative hypothesis. Remember, we don't have to worry about one-sided. It's null hypothesis. They're all equal. Alternative. They're not all equally popular. Okay, now we have to validate our calculation. So, step one, how is the data collected? It needs to come from a simple random sample. So, looking back at the problem, it doesn't say. So, again, that's what we have to say. We are unsure. We have the data came from simple random sample. If another method was used, it could invalidate our results. Now, our next requirement has to do with our counts. And in this case, our expected counts. We said all expected counts must be at least one, and no more than 20% of them can be less than five. In this case, they're all at least one, and 0% are less than five, so we pass that check.
So that's the check that tells us that the data should be distributed according to a chi-square distribution. All right, let's do our calculation. We'll jump to the other side. To get our statistic, it's observed count minus expected count squared. So we have uh, five such values. For cherry, it's gonna be 32 minus 20 squared over our expected, which is 20, and we're doing the summation here. So strawberry is 28. Orange is 16. Let's see, mine was 14, observed. And lastly, grape. And that's our statistic. So calculating. our p-value. So using our table, we take a look and we've got to figure out our degree of freedom. So in this case, in the number of categories is five, right? So that makes our degree of freedom four. N minus one. So looking at degree of freedom of four and reading across I can see that 18 lands between the entries of 16.42 and 18.47. So this is table C. So I've got 16.42 and 18.47. Now, if we look up at the top for the probability, we'll see that 16.42 corresponds to a probability of 0.0025, and 18.47 corresponds to a probability of 0.001. So as accurate as I can get using my table is that my p-value is between those two. Notice this was a fixed level alpha test, so you can compare it to an alpha of 0.05. But if it were not a fixed level alpha test, you would be able to say, with strong evidence, we can reject the null hypothesis. So we're going to be concluding that there is a difference in flavor preference. Let's go over and do that on our calculator now. Scan through this real quick. Uh, and remember, guys, the PowerPoints are on Canvas, so you can maybe have that up on a separate window while you're watching the video and just kind of freeze it wherever you're, you're interested.
Oh, yeah, this is important. Whenever you guys reject the null hypothesis, we want you to do an informal follow-up analysis. So go back and look at your calculation and notice where were we off by a lot, right? This value right here is our biggest contributor to the chi-square statistic. And this value is our next biggest contributor. So we could tell Josh, hey, it looks like this um, flavor is much more popular than the others. Okay, so that was cherry. And we can also tell Josh, well, this flavor right here was much less popular than expected. That was great. So now we kind of answer Josh's question. Hey, buy extra cherry flavor, buy less grape flavor when you're starting out. Okay. Um, but we do need to write that in our conclusion. And we only write it when we reject the null hypothesis. When we fail to reject the null hypothesis, there is no need to say, hey, this is more or less than we expected because we're saying it is what we expected. All right. Got time. Thank you, Mr. Medley. Keep it up. Keep it up. Thank you. I expect an Oscar for this. I now know you expect an Oscar. If you go over to your test menu and scroll down, you will find only a chi-square test. This calculation is not a chi-square test, it is a chi-square goodness of fit test. So using the 83, you do not have a provision to do this directly. I believe some of the other calculators do have a feature that says chi-square GOF test. So if you have that, you can use it. Um, but the calculation is really simple. So we can do it without that feature very easily. Simply go into your lists, enter your observed counts, Choose another list for your expected counts. Then highlight an empty list and enter your formula. So let's see, we've got our observed count in list two, minus our expected count in list one. We want to square that, and we want to divide by our observed count. So I've just entered the chi-square formula. Again, at the top of the list, if you enter it in the body of the list, it'll say error. Then when I press enter, I get the results of each one of these, right? So there's the 144 over 20, 64 over 20, etc. So all I need to do now is find the sum of list three. So sum of list three, go to a blank screen, so quit. To find sum, go under the list feature, because we're trying to find the sum of a list. It's in yellow above stat. Go to math, and there it is, number five, sum. So sum of list three, and there we go. There's the 18 that we found by hand. Now, to get your p-value from your calculator, we're going to go to stat. I'm sorry, not stat. We're going to go to distributions because we're talking about a chi-square distribution. Um, we're going to go to chi-square CDF. We'll enter 18, and then we'll put in our degree of freedom of four. And I think that works. Nope. Let's try it. Try it again. Four, 18. 
Uh, it must have a lower bound, upper bound thing. So let's try that. Lower bound, upper bound, degree of freedom. Okay, try that again. Lower bound, it's right tailed, so lower bound should be 18. Upper bound infinity, degree of freedom four. There we go. So enter your statistic followed by infinity, followed by your degree of freedom, and that's how you'll get your p-value from your calculator. Okay, so we'll move on. You can pause it right here, go back over this example, uh, but I'm going to move on to the next example. Okay, so here's example two. Uh, so this example is a little bit different than the first example because we're not claiming an equal distribution across all four categories. This time we're claiming that it's 10% freshman, 20% sophomore, 40% junior, 30% senior. Um, but that's okay. It's pretty easy. Take the sum of all four grade levels that we observed, multiply by the corresponding percentages. So um, under the null hypothesis, I would be expecting 10% of 100, or 10 freshmen. Uh, for sophomores, it's 20% of 100, or 20. For juniors, it's 40%. And for seniors, it's 30%. Um, again, I made this one really easy, so I could do it without a calculator as an example. Many of the problems, when you take whatever percent of this, this number had been 101, for example, we'll be getting non-whole numbers here for our expected counts, and that's perfectly acceptable. Never round off your expected counts. Okay? Leave them as fractions if that's what happens. All right, so null hypothesis. The distribution is... Freshman, 20% sophomore, 40% junior, 30% senior. Alternative hypothesis, the distribution is not. reminds me. Going back to the first example, sorry about that, should have said it earlier. On the first example, we said all flavors are equally likely. A common mistake for the alternative on that, students will often say um, the proportion of cherry does not equal proportion of strawberry does not equal the proportion of lime does not equal the proportion of grape, etc. Realize this is incorrect. This statement says each and every proportion is different. That's not our alternative. Our alternative is at least one is different. We're not saying every single proportion is different. So 
Don't ever write your alternative to a chi-square like this. It should be written the distribution is not this, and we're not telling you which one it has to be that's different. It's any one of them or multiple could be different. Okay, uh, let's see our checks. How was the data collected? It says this year's club. Is that a simple random sample? No, that's not a simple random sample. Uh, could we potentially treat it as a simple random sample and say that this year's club is a random representation of the club from any potential year? Possibly. Uh, let's look at our expected counts. They're all at least one. 0% are less than five. Therefore, we meet the criteria to say that this will be distributed uh, as a chi-square. I didn't have room to write it over there, but no, I didn't have, have it on the PowerPoint either. Here's our calculation. I'll write it over here, I suppose. Freshman is 14 minus 10 squared over the expected. That's a common mistake. A lot of students forget and they put it over the observed. It's always over expected. And juniors, 51. So working that out, we should get the 11.2, etc. And we have a degree of freedom this time of three, because n was four. So getting our p-value from our table, We go to row three, we read across, and 11.2 is between 9.84 and 11.34. So my p-value, I hope you guys have your formula sheets at home. Um, if you don't, this table is found in the back of your book, I believe, or the front of the book, one or the other. Hopefully you at least have your book with you. Um, otherwise, I guess just use your calculator. So our p-value is between uh, 1 and 2 percent. This one is a fixed level test at 10 percent. We're well below that, so we again have strong evidence to reject an all hypothesis. It appears that the club is not made up of 10% freshman, 20% sophomore, 40% junior, and 30% senior. So since we reject it, we again need to do an informal follow-up. So we gotta look back and say, where were our counts the most off? What were the largest contributors, right? We have these four contributors. What were the largest contributors to this 11.2, right? Notice, not much of a contributor, right? Sophomores were pretty much as expected. Um, seniors, also, not much of a, of a, a pod, they're not overrepresented, they're underrepresented by quite a bit, so this would be our largest contributor, that seniors were uh, underrepresented this year. So that's why we wrote our pair seniors were underrepresented this year. Okay. And whether we can generalize that to all years is kind of dicey. 
So it's best to say this year's club didn't follow the traditional pattern. All right, so that's the end of this example. Feel free to pause, review it. We'll move on to the next example. And that's a lot of words. So take a minute, read that. All right, so our sample size is 300. Now for our expected counts, we have to do 38% of 300. So and for self-employed category, it's 23% of 300. Freelancing, we're at. Oh, whoops, I'm sorry. That was freelancing for 69. Skip 32%. 32% of 300 is 96. And 7% of 300 is. Okay, so here's our expected counts again. They must sum up to exactly the same as the observed counts. Um, I guess I made another easy example where these all came out as whole numbers, but again, I'm stressing to you, if these are fractional, leave them as fractions. Do not round them off. All right, null hypothesis. Residents of Allegheny County uh, match the proportions of census for everyone. Yes. they don't match or they're different now our checks let's see does it say SRS doesn't say SRS so again we are unsure
the sentence that you've written about 100 times now. Okay, uh, expected counts. All are at least one. 0% or less than five, so we may assume a chi-square distribution. I know if 0% or less than 5, then they're all at least 1. But I keep writing all expected counts are at least 1 because it turns out in the past when I've excluded that sentence and a student comes across a problem where there are some counts that are less than 5, then they don't know what to do. So um, I keep writing that sentence even though clearly it's covered by the, the second value there. Okay, let's calculate our chi-square. Observed one twenty two and then it's six. work that out. I'm going to just go ahead and click forward on my PowerPoint. Here's so we did that. And now degree of freedom. We have four categories. And degree of freedom is three. Looking at your table, degree of freedom of 3, you'll notice the very first entry is already 4.11. So our chi-square value doesn't even reach the first entry. The first entry is a p-value of 0.25. So I know my p-value is greater than 0.25. And of course, when my p-value is greater than 0.25, I have no evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Again, be careful, that doesn't give me evidence for the null hypothesis. It's a lack of evidence against it. So we simply conclude we do not have enough evidence to say that Allegheny County residents are any different than the national distribution. And because we didn't have a significant result, there is no informal follow-up. There's nothing to say that, oh, they're different in this way because we didn't say they're different. We concluded that there's a reasonable chance that they're not different, that they're the same as national average. So um, on a test, I will take off points if you do an informal follow-up and start telling me where they're different because that's not our conclusion. We didn't conclude difference. Okay, so that's it. Um, if you have questions for me, again, come by the flex time office hours. Um, hopefully you all have devices that are capable of accessing uh, the internet. If not, I guess you can send me an email and we'll see what we can do. Oh, as far as turning in homework, as of right now, the easiest thing will be do the homework, take a picture, make sure your name is visible on that homework paper, attach it to the email and email it to me. Please don't embed it in the email because then when I go um, to print it, it gets all wrong size depending on what um, 
format you took your picture in. So please attach it and it's much easier for me to view and print. Okay, that's all I have for you.